Yes, this is Joan. Um, it sounds like Helen's attorney is suggesting a, a boundary line agreement um, just to straighten it out. And that's a very standard, simple procedure. Uh, you record it in the town records and then take it back to listers and say, hey, look, <laughs> this is a correction to the boundary line. Both both property owners on either side have, have agreed to it. I don't think they can argue with it at that point. Uh -oh. That's often what's done in these cases when it's a very simple thing and there's no contention between parties. And there, you know, if you're clear about where the boundary line is so you don't have to do a survey, the boundary line agreement should do it. That's like what he's, he, or, he or she is suggesting to you. <clears throat> how, much, how much property are we talking about? Well, the, it's a 70 by 200 foot building lot. Uh, there are three of them in a row. And, and one of the mistakes in the past is that the property just vanished. So in the previous tax, tax map, uh, Helen's property and my property are the same size and they're right up together. And if I hadn't looked at a Google map of the thing where the buildings are, I, I would have sorted this out myself. It's complicated. You can see why the guy made a mistake. You know, it's a human mistake. Um, but I think that's, it, it, that's the simplest way it sounds like, as Joan suggests, to take care of it. Uh, as long as it's it, it, whatever, whoever the power is to be, uh, agree that that's that's. I would I would um, probably defer to the um, um, folks in the on the planning board in terms of um, just to get full clarification about how that's treated because they're the ones that usually are dealing with um, property transfers and subdivisions and and in this line and I know when there's just a small correction that that's that's easily done i think that would be um that's who i would go to ask um, um and i'd be willing to to make those inquiries along with you yeah i believe that, that if you called a lot line adjustment yeah i think so yeah. that's something that's yeah we've done important. it in the past before i i remember sitting on there and adjusting some lines people the two abutting landowners make a request that they want to move the boundary and they both agree to it and it's it's a pretty easy thing yeah right. um, you just both agree to move the line wherever the line is and uh it doesn't necessarily require a survey i don't believe in the it past anyway. no. no and it just just wherever you guys agree where the line is and and then you just gotta get it copied and and put in the register in the town office um, I think uh, that's, I, that's I think the same thing as a boundary line adjustment, lot line adjustment, same thing as what Pat yeah. yeah. Um, Joan, I think I went through something similar when I gave the place, the land where skate space is to the town for the skating rink, because mm -hmm. we, had to have, we had to have a new line for the end edge, a new boundary for my property. And I think I went through something similar. It sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. and I think it's through zoning that you got to do it. Yeah. yeah. So who's the zoning person I talked to? Or do you do that? Mm -hmm. no. No, I'm the administrator, but then the zoning board is um, Dan McKinley is the, the chair of the zoning board and um, Joan Pontius is on that and Sandy Haas has um, got quite a, a lot of experience on that with um, the procedural. Is, should I call Dan then? Is that? Um, call Dan or if you want to um, join in on the, the um, next meeting is the first Tuesday of every month. This is when we have that meeting, and that's a good um, you know time. But you could call Dan and, and ask him those questions ahead of time, also. Okay. So, uh, yeah. and it's called a property line adjustment. I think so. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. That's, that's the end of my agony for tonight. All right. May that be the least of your worries. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got the minutes. We got Rob. Um, so Joan, um, would you like to? Um, let us know what you've been up to. <laughs> well, uh, I'll keep it short and just talk about uh, a current item that needs your thoughts and possibly approval. Um, two items having to do with the Henry property. Um, I don't know if you remember, but this is one of the um, lower end downhill side of Bethel Mountain Road. And they had a great deal of slope and drainage work done uh, during the project. Um, the Henrys, uh, it's two brothers uh, from Connecticut and their father. Uh, so the camp, it's a camp property. Um, been in the family for at least a couple generations, maybe longer. 
and um, the, the camp itself sits right on the brook. And in fact, I think he had, they had to do some kind of reconstruction, at least of the back part uh, in the wake of Irene. But in any case, the issue here, uh, the first thing is, is that there were uh, some trees and, and tall brush that needed to be cleared away on the road side of the brook, which is immediately across from the camp um, in order to do all the drainage and, and slope repair work uh, that was done. And they were kind of upset about it because um, it sort of opens up the, the camp to more noise from the traffic. And instead of looking at a nice green hillside or slope, they're looking at um, a big pile of rocks. And um, they've made their peace with that. You know, they understood that it's just something that had to be done. But they did ask um, a concession from the, from the town that we agree to replant uh, some uh, softwood trees, you know, we we're thinking hemlocks, uh, partway up the slope where there's still uh, soil, uh, open soil that hasn't been covered by rock, and it would provide them a little bit of, of um, screening and noise buffering from the road. So that was something we did agree to last year. I remember brought it to you and you know you were fine with it, but um, now they're, they're asking about when we're going to do it. And there's still time this year, you know, fall is an okay time to plant trees. So uh, I need your okay to, to um, purchase out, you know, I to for the select board board and six trees. That would be somewhere around, say, 10 feet tall. Um, and um, I'm going to have to, if you call that that for, I'm ready yeah. to select board meeting right now. Um, we may want to get a little bit of pricing together. Ten foot trees. The taller the tree when you buy them, the more expensive they get. We no, may, I may know. want to think about six foot trees, seven foot trees, eight foot yeah. trees. Yeah. Well, he was asking about ten, and you know we can we can work on that. You know, I right. agree. Maybe right. partnership can can help us determine. Uh, that's the not price. something. That that's not something they they okay. do. Okay. Um, uh, so we would have to purchase them and then have someone uh, plant them. And I didn't know whether you're okay with hiring somebody to do that. Um, it's a little bit of a gnarly spot. So um, a little bit of shovel work to get those planted properly. And there is a shelf there where there's going to be enough soil that we're not just planting them on rocks. A, well, it's not exactly a shelf, but the slope, there's a point on the slope where it's not so steep that it would be really hard. And hemlock trees there, I mean, they're all, grow, there's a lot of hemlocks growing there already. And so I think they would, would take probably is uh, better than a lot of other species would. Yeah. How many trees are you talking about here? Um, I don't, you know, I, I didn't actually talk to him directly this time. Uh, he called Cricket for some reason and asked her to go out there with him. And they thought for somewhere between four and six. Um, but you know, you can decide how many you want to do. Yeah, well, I think this was part of the deal when we did the work last year. I think we need to follow through and, and take care of it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So why don't I get um, try and find an idea of who might do the planting and what the overall cost would be. And I'll get back to you with, with that yeah, information. Right. And then the second part of it is um, towards the end of the whole Bethel Mountain Road project, uh, Boys and King um, identified a stream bank erosion site. Uh, it's also on the Henry property. It's further up the slope, uh, pretty close to the boundary with the next property. And uh, I asked them to send me a memo which kind of described what the problem was saw and what the town uh, should be prepared to do either now or at some point in the future. And then they ended up sending me a rather elaborate plan. <laughs> it seems like it's gonna be pretty expensive. But in any case, I talked to Cricket about it and also checked with VTrans to find out whether if there was indeed a problem that needed to be addressed sooner rather than later, whether VTrans would uh, Funded through one of their programs, um, you know, either structures grant or something else. 
And the answer back was probably not, um, at least based on their understanding of the situation right now, because it doesn't have any direct impact on the stability of the road above. Um, it's more of a stream bank issue. The issue is that the stream bank at that section is, um, it's, you know, the current is pushing against the toe of the slope. And it could be that it's, uh, I don't think right away, uh, that eventually it could sort of um, wear away at the slope and destabilize the toe and bring that steep slope down um, in some way. So the suggestion that uh, Cricket and I came up with is to have, uh, if you remember Sean from Sanborn Head, who was the geotech guru for the project, uh, really smart, capable guy. And he happens to be um, also working for VHB on the uh, West Hill Bridge. So we thought maybe we could snag him if he hasn't already done his work for VHB, uh, we could try and snag him for you know, a short period of time just to take a look at that slope and make a recommendation on what he thinks the town should do. And Cricket's feeling is, and uh, it makes sense to me, is that probably it's just gonna be monitor it. And monitoring would simply consist of putting up some stakes at the locations and some string so that Cricket can back on, a, on an occasional basis and just check and see whether the slope is actually moving or not. So uh, I wanted to propose that to you. Um, would probably be a couple hours of Sean's time if, if that included travel um, to make a recommendation to us. Perhaps we can incorporate, um, if they suggest that we plant something there to, to stabilize it so it doesn't go further uh, with, the, with the tree planting, maybe we can lump that together um, because they do have to come in from the, the lower stream area. Right. Yeah, certainly can, yeah, ask him if that would be uh, a good solution for that, yeah. Right, and Sean is also, um, he's part of uh, Agency of Natural Resources, right? When, we, when no. we're talking about where No, uh, he's with uh, an engineering firm called um, Sanborn Head. Right, so may, we may possibly need Jaron Borg to be involved or? Uh, to be honest, I don't think so. I don't okay. think so at this point. Um, if we had to actually do something to stabilize the back. Okay. But I, I don't think we need him at this point. Um, Joan, what is Sean's last name? Um, sorry, I can't remember it and I didn't have it in my queue. That's all right, we, won't, we don't need his name. I'll just call him a consultant. Yeah, Thank you. Sean with a U, not a W. I know that much. Thank you. And so, and this was brought to our attention by the Henrys because this is on the northern or the eastern upper edge, uphill edge of their property. Well, it was originally brought to our attention by Du Bois and King. And okay. I'm not sure if the Henrys went up there and said, oh, this looks like a problem. I mean, to look at it now, unless you're an engineer, you probably, you know, really wouldn't see a problem. So I'm not sure if the Henrys, but I know Cricket uh, met with Dave Henry a couple weeks ago, I was gonna join them, but I wasn't able to. But anyway, they went up to look at it also, but it is on the Henry's property. And did you say the Eastern edge? I couldn't, it couldn't quite hear before. No, um, I didn't. Okay, I'm sorry. Hmm. All right. Upper edge, that's probably what you heard. Thank you. The upper end. The upper end, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, well, I guess we'll, um take a closer look at that and see what what's what I guess monitoring it makes sense and since we're going to be going in there to plant some trees maybe we could um you know I mean I'd like I'd like to go walk in there and look and see exactly sure. what we're talking about sure. okay so, yeah. great all right thank you is that it for you Joan uh yeah yeah good yeah that's enough <laughs> um any property um we've got um nobody here from the library and in terms of the highway revised they've completed the reconstruction of the sand pit the sand sifter not the sand pit but the sand sifter so um on a hot day it's like one step closer to winter coming right but um uh, and terry is not here i haven't heard anything i know he did um work on a leak down by the um, 
the ski house on the base of Kennedy Drive. Um, then in terms of new business, we've got a liquor license approval for a second class um, license for Sandy's Books and Bakery. And hey, Dune, can we back up for a second? Yep, yep. Uh, with that utilities thing, uh, we had an issue with, with Dana as far as uh, fixing his pay because he had to work some overtime there. And because it was run between two different groups, the, the uh, uh, road crew and then the sewer department or the water department, yeah, that he worked some overtime. And so Becky can't authorize paying overtime on something out of the water department because the hours don't match up to the overtime that he had. You see, because he split his 40 hour week was done in a split shift with some going to the water department and some to the work department. So she needs authorization from us to match his pay up so that he can be paid the number of hours that he worked and get his time and a half in there. So is some of this overtime coming from the road pay and some from utilities pay? It's all coming from the utility part. Just asked um, pushed him over time. Right. She couldn't yeah. do it because he had a he had like a 50 hour a week or whatever it was. I don't know the exact numbers, but but she couldn't write the check because it was split between the two departments. So she couldn't pay the overtime for it. And she needed authorization from us to do it. So what what she needs to do is balance his time because it's time and a half. So if he worked, let's say 10 extra hours. Mm -hmm. You know, he needs to get paid for that extra hours that he worked. So we need to authorize Becky to just settle up his timesheet through whatever means she can to make it work. Is that something she needs in writing or can we just authorize that right now? I think we can just authorize it right now. Is that correct, Julie? Well, we'll we will need something in writing because it's actually a rate that needs to be added to um, to the system so that we have a rate for the um mm -hmm. for, for the time and a half for right. utilities. Yep. 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 All right. I'm gonna um well I I I think there's no problem in, in doing that. You wanna right. is, is Becky gonna create that um, document that we need to sign or would you do that, Julie? Yes. Yeah, yep. we'll have that for you. Yep. All right. Good. Good. Um, anything else on that, Frank? No, that's that's no. all yeah. Becky had. Yep. So I noticed on the um, the um, we got the liquor license for um, Sandy's Books and Bakery, and what was looked uh, slightly unusual to me is that usually they would um, mark down whether it is a restaurant or a hotel or what have you and they um, wrote in there a new box saying retail and I guess that's because of the class two liquor license which a lot of restaurants are doing so they can sell um, for people to take off the premises which is a way of them to um, which has been authorized by the, the state for to help offset some of the, the stresses of the COVID on small businesses I'm just not clear if that's a legitimate um, way to submit the uh, liquor license application to the state, if they would accept that or not. Um, I, I believe it is. Yeah. Because of the new COVID, um, the way that they're the, the way that they're setting it up now, so that they can sell retail, um, because they don't have the space inside. To, right, right, know, right, right. That's what I thought, but I just thought I'd bring it up because I noticed it was written in there. And um, just like we're allowed to have this meeting on Zoom and not physically joining each other, so. Right. So um, in light of that, I, I'd move to approve that application then. Uh, second that. Yep, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And and really, um, this meeting could be living up to its name of Zoom if no one else has anything else they want to talk about, because that's all we, all we have on the agenda. There is some uh, issues we need to address with the taxes. Oh, right. Because we haven't put out anything on the taxes, and uh, we got that August you know, date that they're due, but we need to come up with something 
that we decided that we could wait till September 15th, but I think with the school budget being an issue, and I believe Julie found out that we can issue uh, three payments through, we can, we can make that as a select board so that we would have three payments instead of four um, for the year. And so, so that we, way we could stagger the payment. We could put it off a little farther, waiting for the state to final, finalize the numbers for the, the school budget. And then it, we wouldn't be having two payments stacked right up against that. each other. Right. Right. So we can authorize that if we need to. Is that, I'm correct on that, right, Julie? Uh, yes, you can. Yep. During the state of emergency, you can make that decision. Okay. And so that's something that we might want to consider. She's going to have to mail out postcards here because we were looking at as our last meeting and we approved the minutes. We had it set for um, September 15th. So is this something you guys are going to discuss and decide on at the next meeting or something or do it beforehand or what? Well, it's really up next to the meeting, board. But it starts getting pretty close. The right. next is the night before the vote so we're not going to know anything more that night than we, we know will. now right. so if i just said that you'll make a decision at a future meeting or maybe the second meeting in august well the the thing even if the school budget passes in august uh -huh. we have a 60-day period that we can't collect any money on it so okay. it's going to back us up to october 15th on the collection part so then we're going to have back-to-back -back payments. Right. That's if the school budget passes. But if it doesn't, then the state's going to authorize what our rate's going to be anyway. As, as I understand it, they sent us something that is, is a, a boilerplate thing for us to mail out tax bills on. So I... I think we're going to have to make a decision on whether or not we want to go three payments or do uh, the four. And this is just to clarify for people that haven't been involved in this conversation yet to, to um, um, clarify that um, to save the expense of having to reissue tax bills if we go ahead and issue an, an initial tax bill and then we get the adjusted rate and then we have to turn around and reissue the tax bills and there's a not only the expense of mailing them but there's the expense of having the people come in to reset just not to something we do in-house that um, the NIMRIC does that so it's um I mean what do we gain by putting this decision off anything there's not really it doesn't sound like there's really um we're going to be forced into it one way or another with the the waiting period that has to happen after the the vote is that correct it's right uh, the lawyer the lawyer that i spoke with said that the other option is that people can they can pay their uh august payment based on last year and then have a credit or at, you know they'll have to add more to their bill um once the bills go out they'll see the difference because it'll be credited to their account so she said they could they could send it in early or um if you wait then it just takes out all that confusion and i it, with three bills i worry that is it a lot to but then there's not a lot of time because you're talking October to June. If you did four, that's every two months you're getting a bill. So either way, it's kind of messy. Either way, we got to pay the taxes. We do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it would it might it sounds like it, if you made a decision now, um, at least people would know what to expect. I don't know. It, it's right. a tangent for people. That's Kind of what I'm I'm thinking. I I don't see an issue with the three payments if it's well documented and well uh, advertised and put out to the public. Personally, I, I 
I don't know that it's going to be that much of a hardship. Yes, it's more money on three payments than four, but there's plenty of time in between to, to, uh, for people to know that. Right. And well, if, it's more money, but it's putting the payment off a little bit farther. So it's not like asking them to come up with a larger amount right now. Right. Exactly. Um, and the other thing is, I, I think we should be okay financially as far as a town goes for, uh, you know, having enough money in our coffers to cover anything until we do have a tax date. Correct. Right. Is that correct, Julie? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because we have the line of credit to fall back on, or correct, because it would be like anticipating taxes, right? We could get a loan if we had to. Right. So there, there'd be interest on that, so it would cost the town money to borrow the money right. to cover. Um, when does I, the first school payment come due? Uh, the education part of it isn't the, uh, the education part comes the first week, uh, I believe the first week of December, but the I education, like the center of the school is due, um, quarterly, I believe quarterly. Well, I... We either make a decision now or we have the same conversation in our next meeting, right? Right. Right. Yep. I'm I'm um I'm inclined to, to go with the three payments and just to just so people know what's going on. I I think that's what, a, a what good are the dates? Say what? What would be the dates of the payments? If you got I think we go out. right right to when we do November would be the first payment. And then we just follow the what we have. November, February, and May. February and May, right? Right. I think we just do that because it's it's kind. It might be it's hopefully just a one-term deal where we have to do deal with it this way. Yeah. No, I would hope that we wouldn't. We could then fall back to the regular schedule. Yeah. Right. No. So the question is for Julie, do you have to have Nemeric dial in and change everything around and pay them to do that so that we have three payments instead of four? I don't believe so. I think we can do that internally. I think we can we can do we can put the dates in our mm -hmm. file. Okay. That's good. But I, I I wonder too if instead of that November, I wonder if we should do October fifteenth, then February, then May. Just so that we're not we're not waiting all the way out to November for money coming in. We we probably could do that and skip yeah. the November payment and make it October. That might not be a bad idea. That's that's kind of what I was thinking originally. So October, October, February, and May would be the due dates if you approve this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that gives us enough time to hopefully have the final numbers for what the school education bill is going to be. Right. Yeah, and that sounds like a good way to go. Julie, that doesn't have any bearing on escrow accounts. That just gets divvied up no matter when the payments are due, correct? Correct. Well, entertain a motion to, to make that adjustment. I'll second it. Yeah. All in yep. favor? All right. All right. All right. October, February, and May 15th. It's, it's, it's just a big mess any way we deal it out. Yeah. Right. We, we have to come up with something. Um, are you going to be okay with putting out some sort of no, notice, Julie, on that? Yeah. Now that I have um, clarity, I can send that out. Sure. Okay. So we're sticking with an October payment due, no matter what happens with the school budget. Um, if it gets defeated again, then your October 15th date could be null and void again. So- um, No, I don't think- No. So. no. 
the state the state's given us guidelines on that already and if it gets defeated again i think we have to put in what they have requested that we do and through that email we got during the week there right um, i'm not we really sure all about it but i think that that's the way we have to go with that is that you talk to the lawyer julie is that kind of the gist you had out of that, that that's what I, that's what I, that's what she had said. Yeah. And then if there is an adjustment, it would probably be adjusted on the last payment in May. I believe so. I can, I, I, once, if, you know, we'll, once we get there, we'll, we'll have more, you know, I can, I can get a better idea of what that all is. All right. And the COVID effect continues, huh? <laughs> yeah yeah bring it on i guess yeah um so um and as a just a side note i guess everyone's aware that the governor has um with the mandate of masks in public spaces and businesses and where people cannot keep a distance starting august 1st so um that's solves the uh the question of is that something that the select board needed to mandate so now it's um i was hoping that we would get that guidance from above so there um there you have it and they have to post signs too is that correct did i did i understand that to be part of that i'm not sure about that but it makes sense the uh the state sent us we have 10 signs that just came yesterday about masks, which uh, Vic and I were going to figure out where to put around town for his businesses and stuff. Right, but they're not specifically um, referring to the the mandate from the governor, oh. are they? No, no, but they, they were generated before that decision. Yeah. 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 I think isn't the mandate that all businesses have to post that? That's what I thought it was, but I could be wrong on that. Department of Health put out a thing this afternoon about it, which was really long. I read it, but I can't remember what they said about it. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to read through a mask. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, all right. So I guess we'll see more signs going up around town then and more masks. All right. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to speak about? I think we're um, down at the know. bottom of the agenda. Let me, uh, this one, let me make something clear because I don't yep. think. In my my uh, attempt to keep things simple, I don't know if I made clear how much work Julie did. She did. She was really helpful, and she did a lot of work. Uh, and I just, I'm, you know, was a. Uh, I just want to make sure everybody understands that I appreciate that. And she did a lot of work in this. I, by making a, it was not a simple issue. It was a hard issue, and she was yeah. really helpful. Yes. Thanks for your appreciation. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Rob. Emma, you had Hello. something you wanted to say. Yes, thank you. I, I messaged in the chat, but maybe that's not being monitored. Um, I, I would like to ask a, a moment to follow up on the permit, road improvement permit approved last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I would, per your suggestion, sent an email to the select board on the 17th, and um, I haven't heard anything back. So I, I wondered if there could be maybe now a response and uh, the main question is is how is the, how will we be notified is has this been decided the um well I, how would you like to be notified with a phone call or an email i don't know if um do you know if um marty and christian have your contact information um i I don't know per se, but is the notification coming from um, the town office or from Martin Kristen? Well, I think they were, we're expecting to be notified a couple of days ahead of time also. So I would, I would, um, I would think it would come from them that step. Okay. Uh, so, uh, is it because it's not clear? Is there an agreement on a cup? Uh, is it a couple days? Is it three days? Are is you trying week? to get in on a um, select board meeting? Um, the um, we have someone here requesting to get in on the meeting, and um, who has the 
you want the um okay the meeting id number is 8674820 and the passcode is 548846 and i i saw you driving through town a couple of times so it's posted on the town clerk's office there So the passcode is five four. You have the dial. It's here. Let me give you a number. Sorry about this, guys. The call in number is one nine two nine two zero five six zero nine nine. Passcode is five four eight eight four six. Five four eight eight four six. There you go. That's the, the meeting ID number. Right. Yeah, I'm, yeah, we're, um, okay. Yep. No. Yes. You're welcome. Bye. All right. Sorry about that. Somebody else, um, Emma, so um, yes. yeah, I guess I better watch for the waiting room if someone wants to come in here. It's kind of late for them to join in. It is kind of late to join in. So I, Emma, I guess, um, Julie, do you have Emma's contact information? I just have an email and I believe phone number. There were three emails in the message. Three emails, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was, I, I put that in the email. That email is um, a great way to be notified, and there's three emails there. Um, okay, so that would be the way you'd prefer to be, to be notified in the email. Yeah, that, that's fine. Um, is, um, but am I, I'm not clear on what is the notice agreement. I heard you just said a few days. That, that yeah. doesn't seem very specific. Well, why don't we say two days then? I mean, not, 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 not weeks ahead of time. Um, two days is very little notice. Um, well, there's, been, there's been three years of notice, really, in the whole process. But um, it's, it's, I mean, what do you... The the same treatment that we give for all of our roads. We just replaced the culvert on Town Line Road uh, last week. Um, and, and they had about three days notice um, that the road was going to be closed. That, that's our normal procedure, you know, two to four days of giving notice of a road closure. So it's probably just gonna follow suit to what we already have as kind of a procedure. Okay, uh, thank you for clarifying. Um, uh, in this case, I, I'm wondering, um, we, uh, my family reached out to another surveyor because before, before the permit was approved, we're wondering just what is actually on the ground. We don't know where our property line is. So per the this US Forest Service survey done by um, Ethan Gomer, we, we're not clear. And um, so, that surveyor, Paul Hannon, has sent a letter to the select board giving um, an analysis from the situation. And um, we, I would appreciate if that is um, looked at by each of you. Um, and 
the question that I have here is, is okay, if it's two or three days notice, we don't know where they're actually going to go. And I'm wondering if there's any way there could be um, a, a walk uh, or, or to mark it out or, uh, and maybe this is something to do with Marty and Kristen, but if there could be support from the town to do so so that we know what to expect when it's during you know. our, our last meeting uh, marty and kristen anticipated that the whole project would only be about three days um so uh, you know i don't think we're talking about something that's going to go on for weeks months you know, this is just going to place pretty quickly they also from reading the newspaper that um, they have also uh, petitioned to the town of Hancock to improve the section of the road that's in Hancock. And that did not get approved at that meeting. That got moved to the next meeting. So maybe your start date of mid-August is probably much more realistic. Um, given, sorry, I just don't understand. The start date of mid-August is realistic because of the Hancock decision? Right, their permit to improve the road, the section of the road that's in Hancock was not approved at that select board meeting. So they have to wait till the next select board meeting, which is two weeks later uh, to have the consideration and the decision done. So it, it's it's going, if they don't they don't have their, their full permit in place for both towns. Okay. It's read in the paper. Uh-huh. Okay, um, well, I hear that they say they're going to do it in a couple days and uh, that's fine, but the description in the, um, you know, in the permit is that there, that there'll be a, a culvert or something put in off of uh, where our driveway starts and we're not sure where that is intended to be. Um, and. I don't, from my understanding of the, from the surveyor is that the, the point between, the length between the two monuments, right? There's a monument found on the north and the southeast points that the point, the section in between is actually not laid out. So um, there's a question of what, where is it actually gonna be? Um, and I ask if there's anything that, can be done from the, the select board's point of view to ease that. I mean, we could ask for a survey to be done of that section. Um, I don't know how feasible that is, but uh, at the very least, to to have a better understanding of what they're gonna where where they're going to do this. Um, Basically, it's right. It's right on the the edge of the the property line, on the the, the boundary between. Um, your property and the Forest Service. We don't know where that is. I mean, there's where our we have where where like trees start, but um, down below, particularly to where do they cut off? Quite the, I guess I've gone, gone through this a um, um, bunch of times. I. I don't have the maps in front of me and, and you know, in a specific survey. I think that basically going by the, the, the pins, the, like you say, the monuments, um, you know, decreeing the, um, it's pretty, it's pretty clear where the road could go is far away from your house and before it starts to be you know, undulating, not flat terrain. It's it's not. I think that it's it's pretty. Um, you know, it's it's kind of kind of um, obvious. It's right along the edge of the until it it starts to the land starts to rise. June, could I ask you? Have you read the letter from Paul Hannon, surveyor? I is this one that came a couple years ago, or is this a new? No, one? it it came today. No, I have not read. I've not seen that letter today. Could I ask that it be read and that this be revisited or addressed? <clears throat> this has been, um, this has gone through the court systems and we're sued saying that the town, the road was 
not where the town map shows it to be and the judge determined that it was so it's um i, I will read i will read his letter and June. yeah i read that letter today yeah. and i i think it would behoove you to read that letter there were some points brought up concerning the judge and what he decided and uh, this uh, surveyor has worked for you guys before. Yep, no, I know his name. Okay. Yeah. So I think you really ought to read that letter and it would be good for all people uh, concerned. Also, we're talking about that uh, culvert that's uh, proposed to go in at the junction of uh, this road and uh, Mason's driveway uh that culvert i'd like you to really take careful consideration to as far as where that water is going to go because i'm oh, sitting right all that down all that open. water heads towards your place yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's important and yeah. i don't want it coming across my land yeah well there is a culvert there already headed that water into your place so yeah it's um it's it's um so technically, that that where Mason's driveway heads off from the road, that that culvert should be across his driveway on the edge of the road. But um, but I I'll I'll read that and and, and I were happy to you know look at this and try and make it as clear as possible for so so if you know what's what's going to be happening. Well, I'd appreciate it when that culvert goes in that it's angled in such a direction to yeah. uh, put the water away from my property and not straight down over the bank. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just to, I'm not sure what's happening now here, but uh, wondering if, you know, if you can look at it and, and the select board can consider how this could be clearer for all parties. And um, of course, we, we need to bring in Martin and Kristen into the conversation. Uh, I don't know what the best process is that, if you think we should reach out to them directly or have a CC the town, I don't know. I would think it would um, make sense for the, the town to work with them and to communicate to you. So I uh, will be involved with that. Some more. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, well, thank you for the time and please do read the letter. Um, yep. No, I just arrived today. I didn't get a chance to see it. In fact, I don't think we made it to my box yet. All right. Um, thank you, Emma. Thank you. Yeah, I understand your concerns and, and there's um, no desire to make it any more impactful than it, than it needs to be. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, the uh, anybody else? Uh, anything I'd like to speak? Or are you ready to go swimming? Okay. All right. Then um, thank you all for coming. Oh. Nope. All right. Going once. Going twice. Um, sold. Thank you all. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Bye. 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 Night.